Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR, HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Welcome, this is Maureen St. Germain, and you are listening to The Practical Mystic with Maureen St. Germain, talk radio to help help you make every day a day of heaven on earth. Using the information that we provide, you'll learn practical living tools to make a meaningful life joyful and fun. We are live, so you can call us. And the call-in number is 425-440-5100, 425 425- Four four zero five one hundred, and you can use code seven two three eight eight six pound. All right, today we have a guest, and I will be introducing her shortly. This is Maureen Saint Germain, and we are together with Kelly Sullivan Walden. Today's show is part of our once a month educational show to reach out. And to help you, our beloved friend and customer, with useful information that will help you make your life magical. So Kelly is a uh, Kelly Sullivan Walden is on a mission to awaken the world to the power of dreams. She is known as America's premier dream expert. She is the number one best-selling author of nine books, including I Had the Strangest Dream and most recently, The Love, Sex, and Relationship Dream Dictionary your guide to interpreting a thousand common dream symbols and about your romantic life. So, Kelly, welcome to our show. Thank you so much, Maureen. It is an absolute pleasure to be with you. And I love the name of your show, by the way. It's oh, thank you. Near and um, dear to me. <laughs> so, um, uh, one of the things that I'm sure people, if they do call in, are going to ask are, you know, what are the most uh, common symbols that people have that have to do with, with relationship, and how do I know that the dream I just had was about a relationship and not something else? Oh, right. I'd say the the primary dream symbols that I write about in this love, sex, and relationship dream dictionary um, they they started off with dreams about me me hearing so many different dreams from people that were sexual in nature about. Um, having sex with somebody other than their significant other and often women more so than men feeling upset or disturbed or excited by these dreams but also worried <laughs> like what does this mean <laughs> you know do oh, i that's secret- funny. yeah and men not so much i mean i you know every once in a while i'd get a worried man about a sexual dream but usually men were quite fine with any sexual dream however it showed up that's a generality and but, what do you tell the women that tell you about this that are worried? The first thing I say is, uh, because I am a Jungian, and Carl Jung is my my teacher from the other side, his, his philosophy that he always taught was that everyone and everything in your dream is you. And from a quantum physics perspective, that's all true as well in our waking lives, too, that we're we're such a part of everything and everything is such a part of us. But from a dream, a symbolic perspective, we can look at every person in our dream as an aspect of us. So, And sex is the ultimate metaphor for joining, deep connection, intimacy. So if we are having a sexual dream about our boss, for example. A boss is symbolic of authority and someone who calls the shots with regards to your business or your career or your finances. So it's about you having an intimate connection with the part of you that calls the shots in your finances or your your career. So that's a really positive dream. It doesn't mean that you lust for your boss or that you're going to sleep your way to the top. So I mostly I like to <laughs> and that you know of course anything could be true and I don't judge anybody but more often than not these dreams are symbolic and not literal. 
every once in a while they are. I'll talk to somebody that says, no, 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 I really do lust for my boss, or I really do lust after the guy next door. And this dream could be then about like a wish fulfillment dream, getting that right, energy right. out of your system. So sometimes right. that's true. But I'd say more often than not, look at the dream symbolic as, as they're symbolic. And you'll get a deeper understanding of what, why that dream and then why now. So that's probably the main thing that the main reason that propelled me into writing this book was I was just getting an onslaught of sexual dreams. And by the way, I just heard a statistic from Dreams Cloud. It's an app that I use. It's a free app for people that want to record their dreams. And they receive millions of dreams every month from people, from dreamers around the world. And they said that a couple of months ago, the number one dream theme that they received that month, and this was back in May, was a sexual or sensual dream. So us, we humans do, we are sensual beings. We, we are incarnated because of two people having some kind of a lustful moment with each other, some kind of a carnal moment. So it's part of, no matter how spiritual we are, we come from a sensual place and we are sensual beings and our dreams in some ways will show us where we're blocked in that area or what's next for us or how to become more enlivened. It's not just about how to have more sex or how to attract more sex, but it's how to ultimately the purpose is about how to funnel that energy toward creating a more dreamy life. And to answer your, la your other part of your question about how do you know whether or not a dream is related directly to your relationships or not, you never know. <laughs> you never know. But because it could be, I mean, I always tell people the disclaimer in the beginning of any of my books is you, the dreamer, are the best interpreter of your dream, the best somebody like myself or any of the other dream experts on the planet can do is to make suggestions and to inspire you to tap more deeply into your own intuition. But I would say that it's a worthy consideration to look at your dreams through the lens of a relationship. Even if it turns out, nope, your dreams are helping you to heal your body or helping you to, to heal a, a work issue or some, something that's completely different, um, you know, how to, how to make more wealth. It might not have anything directly to do with your relationship, but look at it through the lens of what if it was helping me to be better in my relationship or to heal a relationship, and you might be surprised at what you find. It might also be giving you insight about that as well. Hmm, very cool. Well, it's funny. Um, I, um, I have a lot of precognitive dreams. Mm. Um, Probably more than most because of who I am. But right. uh, one time I was reunited, this is before I was married, I was reunited with my boyfriend that we had been separated for, you know, six months or something. And um, um, it involved a physical move. I had moved to New York and he hadn't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got together over the holidays and I never had a sex dream. This is so funny for me to say this on the air. And, but I had one that night. Mm. And so I said to him in the morning, um, you know, do you think there's any reason why I would have a sex dream with you? Now, keep in mind, you know, I'm all about energy. So mm -hmm. uh, I said, you know, because I've never had one. I always take the express. Mm. And the implication was that I'm always at the higher realms pretty quick, so I'm not stopping at those realms where people are having those kinds of experiences. Not to say there's anything wrong with them. It's just, you know, I'm on a different mission when I go out of my body at, at the dream time. So he said to me, well, uh, I have been doing a little flirting online. <laughs> with you or with other oh, people? Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, with other people. Yeah. In, it, in its essence, you know, I was being completely loyal to him, and he was, um, um, I'll just say he was satisfying the male urge. Okay. And I don't know that he was actually, um, you know, like like a certain president said, I didn't have sex with that woman, and he probably could say that too. Right, <laughs> right, if you want to get, define sex. <laughs> right, right. Right. So anyway, um, that was my only experience, and it was so. It was. It was not the kind of. It was not. A, I don't remember now any of the details because I, I um, forgot. But I remember the conversation, and I think that in my case, it wasn't about me having sex right. as much as it was about some a whole bunch of stuff around sex. 
Right. And well, you you bring up two yeah. really very interesting points. Sometimes the dream, I, I think more often than not, the dream is about us, but sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it is precognitive. Sometimes it is um, a psychic glimpse into what's going on with somebody that we love or a complete stranger, for that matter. So if the dream doesn't resonate, like this just doesn't feel like it's for me. This feels like it has nothing to do with me, and you really honestly look at your life, and, you, and you're given it that look, and you come back with, nope, it doesn't feel like it's mine, then you do, you know, it is... It happens to people, especially those that have kind of the bandwidth for it and the access. Sometimes we dream on behalf of other people or we do get wisdom into other people. And in your case, you did something that I always recommend people do, and sometimes they, the results are pleasing and sometimes they're not pleasing, but it's always important. You did the reality check. You mm-hmm. picked up the phone and you checked into it. So I believe that every dream requires some form of action in our waking life, every remembered dream, and you did just that. So that moved things forward for you. I don't know what mm-hmm. you did with that boyfriend, but I don't think you're still with him. You're not. You're married. You're married to somebody else, yeah. <laughs> right, right. So did that, um, if you don't mind me prying and you don't have to say yes or no, but was that was that like a deal breaker or was that just valuable information? Well, no, and, and you know, you? I was with him that, I mean, I had, I, I had was physically with him, which is I was tapping into his field, which is why I was reading his field, you see. That was what yeah, happened. but I mean, did you act on that? Did you then? Oh, well, when, the when he told me, you know, he told me his truth. I mm-hmm. said to him, "Well, that was you brave. know, um, you, you know, I mean, he we had an honest relationship." I said to well, him, "Well, you know, I always thought that because our connection was so good, that um, you wouldn't, you know, go into that arena." Although I did know you, that was one of the places you went before you met me. Um, So I never really specified, but if you would like to continue our relationship, I have to tell you that that's got to be off limits for you. Right. So I didn't make him bad or wrong because we didn't set a boundary on that. Okay, good, but it was information. It was information. He was honest with me. I was honest with him and said, look, if you want to keep doing that, go right ahead, but then I'm not your honey. Right, right. I think it's funny. I think anybody who's involved with someone who's tapped into their psychic ability <laughs> should just know you're not going to get away with anything. That's so just true. be honest. Yeah. And he did. I, I appreciate him right. for being honest. Yeah. It yeah. happened. I, I was with a guy years and years and years and years ago, and I kept having re- recurring dreams of him being with another woman. And I, it was very vivid. I could see the details of this woman. I could see the details of the place. And it was, it felt so real, and I was omniscient in the dream, and I'd wake up and go, I had another one of those dreams, and he's like, oh, that's weird, and, you know, he kept oh. kind of like hemming and hawing, and finally one day I was like, he's, it was something about his response to my dream that was just odd, and I all of a sudden knew, okay, this wasn't just a dream, a series of weird. dreams, I was, and little by little over time, and the guy was... He, he wasn't forthcoming, but eventually I got it out of him that, yeah, the whole thing that I had seen in my dream was absolutely valid, and it absolutely happened. And, and it was devastating to me, but at the same time it was reassuring to me that, that you know, I think we can't always – the issue isn't about necessarily trusting other people, although, of course, it, it comes down to it. But it, really, I think the pain is when we can't trust ourselves. And I felt like I could, through that experience, I felt like I could trust myself. So even if I was with somebody who wasn't being honest, at least I knew that if I listened to my dreams, if I paid attention to this more subtle energy, that it was right on and it was guiding me. So even though, it, you know, we did end up being friends and all that jazz, but... That was pretty incredible. Most of the time, though, I, people that have cheating dreams, this is another big, big, big theme in, in the book. There's a few big dreams that I cover okay. in the love, sex, and relationship, and one of them is just sex with anybody. One of them is cheating dreams, whether you're the one that's cheating or, or your partner is. And symbolically, if somebody dreams of their partner cheating on them, I ask them to consider or to ask themselves the question, where might you be cheating yourself out on an opportunity or not honoring yourself? Where have you made a promise that you haven't kept to yourself? Did you Mm -hmm. say that you were going to go to the gym and you keep bailing out on that? Are you 
opting? Are you getting distracted? Are you more focused on somebody else than on, on what's really important? So sometimes, you know, I'll get like a big aha from somebody that's having these dreams. If they really trust that their partner is faithful, then a reason that they may be having those dreams is there's a place where they are not being faithful to themselves. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. It's very great wisdom. Um, I think that this whole business is true. And I think one of the really powerful messages that you've given us is the whole idea that if, even if you um, if you have a dream that doesn't make sense, and you you know you've gone through, are you are you the one that's letting yourself down? And it still comes up empty. There's nothing wrong with saying, "Is there any chance?" Blah blah yes. blah. Yes, yes. It's true. Because yes. it's not exactly. like you're choosing your partner. You're simply asking the question. Right. You know, right. I who've been with people like us have learned, I think, by now, they can't just blow that off because we already are on to them. You know, even with my first husband, when there was something going on, I asked him, you know, I had this dream and, you know, <laughs> I described the whole dream to him. Do you have any idea what that means? And, oh, no. But he told me later when he heard the first dream, it was like, um, uh, what's the word I want? Um, he knew the whole thing was true. And, and he was quite shocked that I had picked up on it right away. And then when I had another dream the next night and another dream the next night, it was kind of like a horror flick, and I kept getting more closer and closer mm. to the actual physical details. And it was like he had to confess. <laughs> right, eventually. It's going to keep coming. And that's, that brings up another point, that, that re- two points, actually. Dream sharing with your partner is a really beautiful practice and a means by which we can establish even more intimacy and get to know each other better. And it's a great thing to talk about if, you know, it's, if both people are interested in that, in that kind of a thing. And eventually, if, if there's enough, there can be a lot of trust that happens if you get in the habit of dream sharing. Or even if somebody dreams that they're having sexual connection with somebody else and they can, you can share it. Like, oh my God, I was, I was with my ex-boyfriend again last night and it, there's space for that, that it could be, well, what was it about that relationship that was important to you that your dream may be helping you to re recapture? So it can be a really healthy thing. And then when, when there is an issue that comes up, the dream will often recognize the pattern before we do in our waking reality. To preempt some of the drama so it doesn't have to be so bad. And um, the other thing is is recurring dreams. Okay, when so when recurring we dreams back... Have- yeah, absolutely. When we come back, we'll come back to that, and we'll pick up where we left off. You are listening to The Practical Mystic with Maureen St. Germain. Our number is 425-440-5100. If you don't get a chance to call in, and you must use our extension code, which is 723-886-POUND, you can reach Kelly, and we will give you information on how you can email her. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Essential oils have been used since ancient times, but there has never been a formulation as amazing and original as Maureen St. Germain's Aro Mandalas, a line of essential oils that combine three spiritual and healing traditions. No matter what negative emotional issue you may be dealing with, there is an Aro Mandalas essential oil that can help you grow and reach a positive emotional response. So clear out those unwanted emotions and feel empowered with Aro Mandalas essential oils. Visit MaureenStGermain.com and click on Essential Oil Blends. That's MaureenStGermain.com. Shh, over here. Here's a secret for a virus-free computer. ESET. They've been a pioneer in the antivirus industry for over 25 years. 25 years of innovative, top-rated antivirus protection. ESET's award-winning security solutions provide a safe online experience for over 100 million home and business computer owners. They are so affordable, fast, and simple to use. So be gone, you blue screen of death. ESET's on my computer. If it's not on yours, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on ESET now. So you want to change your life? Well, I have a great, easy, and stress-free way on how to do that. Get a guided meditation with Maureen St. Germain. Powerful guided meditations on CDs. Or you can download an MP3 to your computer or tablet. There's so many to choose from, and once you get one, they are so reasonably priced and work so well. You'll probably want them all, and why not? 
Visit MaureenStGermain.com and click on Books and Media. Do it now. MaureenStGermain.com, Books and Media. And help change your life now. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Attention, practical mystic listeners. Here's a deal you won't want to refuse. If you've ever wanted a chance to get a free Akashic reading with Maureen St. Germain, then here's all you have to do to increase your chance for a totally free reading. Email Maureen. Tell her your problem, and if your story is used on the Practical Mystic Show, then you'll win a 30-minute Akashic reading with Maureen St. Germain. How easy is that? And the email address is easy to remember, too. Radio at MaureenStGermain.com. Email her now and get a chance at that free reading. Radio at MaureenStGermain.com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Hi, we're back. This is Maureen St. Germain, and I'm here with Kelly Walden, who is a dream expert and author of nine books, five of them on dreams, and her most recent one is Love, Sex, and the Relationship Dream Dictionary. Kelly, why don't you tell people how they can reach you if they have questions when they're listening to this show later? Oh, thank you. Uh, probably the best way is through my Facebook page, which is Kelly Sullivan Walden Dr. Dream. It's very long, but it's doctor spelled all the way out. And also on Twitter, um, Kelly S. Walden is my Twitter handle. For emails, they can send something to info at Kelly Sullivan Walden. So that's Kelly as in green, Sullivan as in Ed, and Walden as in pond. And um, they can also go to my website. There's Everything is there at IHadTheStrangestDream.com. And I'm sure they can buy your books on Amazon and other bookstores. Yep, wherever <laughs> books are sold, definitely. And I highly recommend mom-and-pop bookstores or Barnes & Nobles if that's possible. But if not, yeah, definitely Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Very good. So we were in the middle of you making a couple of points about... Dream yes. I think. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one practical thing I was saying was about dream sharing among partners. I think that's mm-hmm. a really amazing practice, and we can so talk a little bit more about that. So tell us what you mean by that. that. Let's, let's define that, print, that, that term first, dream sharing. What do you mean by sure. that? Sure. So, the, the, you know, the, um, the, 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 I want to say something down under, and I can't think of the word, but, you know, <laughs> Down under, you know, where they actually all share the same dream. Yes, yes, yes. Now this but is we're a not talking different. about that. But okay. the, a lot of the indigenous cultures do share dream. I mean, do a dream circle in the morning, and that's the, that's mm-hmm. a really important ritual. So this is this is similar. This is first thing in the morning, maybe over breakfast, over coffee, uh, to share your dream with your partner or with your family, and. Um, and to have the rules be that there's no taboo in sharing that, you know, if you can get to that place. I know that I, I couldn't have shared all my dreams with, with earlier um, relationships that I've been in. I can share any dream at all with my husband, God, and he can share any dream he has with me, and there's room for it, there's space for it. Um, somebody, you know, people have to be mindful of what the capacity is of their relationship. But I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sneaky way to become deeper with each other, to become hmm. more connected to different parts of each other, and to recognize themes that we wouldn't catch otherwise with our conscious mind. So, I'm all about connection and intimacy and what brings us closer. So this is one of those tools that that does that without being obvious about it. It just looks like, oh, I'm just reporting a a dream. I was in a hallway. I was walking down, and I saw my uncle, and then I fell, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't seem like I'm revealing that much about myself. But if we look at the symbols in that, it's, it's revealing everything. It's really revealing where my soul is and my spirit is that day and what's what may be stuck or what I might need support in and and vice versa. So whenever there's dreams that get shared among uh, a couple, people, I think couples are always looking for ways to go deeper and stay connected and have new things to talk about when you already know everything it seems like there is to know about the other, then this is, enough, this is a, a place where there's fresh content every day, you know, because we're constantly evolving people and our dreams are a place that really reveal that. So that's 
one practice. Don't shame okay, each other. Okay, now before you go on, yes. I want you to give our listeners a script. Let's say you're a woman, you love this idea, you want to approach your husband, but you're not sure how to suggest mm-hmm. it. You're not sure how to engage him in the process. I'd say that here's a sample script. I, I, I really love you. And I, it's my favorite thing in the world to be close and connected to you. And I have a feeling that that's the same for you. And I just heard this lady talking on Maureen St. Germain's radio show that, um, that suggested that maybe we should share our nighttime dreams with each other. How would you feel about that? And if he says, oh, I can okay. hear the guy saying, just don't wake me up. Tell me in the morning. No, uh, for sure. Don't wake each other up. <laughs> don't, and don't, don't blurt your dream out while the other person has, before the other person has written their dream down. Don't, that's like an, a boo-boo in the dream etiquette journal. You want to make sure that each other has had a chance to have their own recording session with their own dream, and then you share it with each other. And, and then you could just start with, if you're somebody who, you know, is the continuation of the script, you could say, here, let's just try this. I can remember this dream, and um, what do you think of this? And the partner might say, wow, that's weird. I don't, I don't get it, because it, often dreams feel like it's a foreign language that mm-hmm. we're, we don't know what to do with. So that's where the dream dictionary comes in handy, because you could have your partner look up the major symbols, like the dream I just described, uncle, hallway, fall. And by looking up those symbols in the book, you go, oh, this makes, you know, you kind of put those puzzle pieces together. You read what those symbols represent. A hallway is a transition. Falling could be about a feeling of loss of control or an invitation to go deeper. An uncle could represent a a connecting with a masculine aspect, an elder masculine aspect of self that could be about strength in the outer world. So you might say, do any of these symbols ring a bell or do any of these definitions ring a bell or... And then the person, that, you know, you, there, I, I think one thing that I'm, that I should do, and I love that you asked me about this script. I think this is something that I need to create for people. It's an actual script for people that mm-hmm. aren't. I mean, for people that do this regularly, this is an obvious thing. But it's not, it's not an ordinary conversation for some people that haven't done it. And it is kind of like right. approaching a unicorn. Like, what do you do? What do you say to the unicorn? <laughs> Do you pet it? <laughs> do you ride on its back? Do you, yeah. you know, bow yeah. at its feet? How do you approach it? So yeah. I think there and, should be. And I think you know, women have women have a tendency to value these elusive things much more than a man does. And so I think you you would want to build into that request. It would mean a lot to me if you would consider doing this as something playful that we could do. That's both sharing and um, informative. And, you know, I want you to help me figure out what my dreams mean, and maybe I can help you with yours. I don't know, but I think right. it would be nice, you know, like that. Yeah, so. yeah. I think, that's, I think you absolutely nailed it, the, the spirit of fun and play. And I would even go a tiny bit further than that and just say it's a, it's a game. Let's play this game. And I share my dream with you. You share your dream with me. We look it up in the in the in the dream book, and we can see what these symbols might mean. And it's at least a talking point. It's a place to be able to explore. And and really, there's there are questions to ask each other to be able to flesh it out. So you can you ask you can ask your partner what, if they do remember a dream. And it doesn't have to be a recent dream. It could be a dream from when they were five years old as a place to get started. And you can ask questions like, if your dream were a movie, what would the title of it be? And you ask these questions once the person has already kind of told you as much of the dream as they remember. Then at the end, as a way to help them interpret the dream, ask them, if your dream were a movie, what would the title of this movie be? And then what would the subtitle be? And then what was the primary emotion that you felt in the dream? And if you can remember, what was the primary feeling that you had when you woke up? Because sometimes you can feel pleasure in the dream, but then you wake up and there's shame. Or vice versa, you're ashamed in the dream, but you wake up and go, that was really cool. Um, and, and then you ask, what was the part of the dream that felt the most significant? So this is a way to be able to distill it down to its essence, because some dreams are epic. Some dreams go on and on and on and on, and it could be overwhelming. Like, there's no way we're going to interpret this dream. It will take 10 years to do that. So I, I ask people that have those big dreams, 
if, if it's your partner that's having a big dream, then just say what part of the dream, what one symbol stands out to be the most important or the part that's the most curious to you. And so they can drill down into that piece, and then you can just be intuitive about that one part or, um, or look that part up in the dictionary and explore that. And that's one way to explore it. And some people ask me, but then, you know, if you don't, understand what every piece of the dream means then maybe maybe you're missing something and i say that's true however i love the the notion that there it's john muir that said if you pick up one piece one leaf or one twig from a tree it contains the entire forest so one deep dream symbol from an, a giant dream contains the e- enormity of your spirit there's a it's like it it's kind of a bullion cube that has so much of what's really going on. So you can keep it simple that way. So those are some, some dream sharing tips. And always preface, if you're going to interpret the dream for somebody, my suggestion is that you preface it with, if it were my dream, I would imagine that it would mean this. I, I, would, I would highly recommend that to not say, this is what your dream means, and this is why you had it, and this is what's wrong with you. <laughs> like, and, you might and, be able to get away with saying, well, Kelly Kelly Sullivan Walden says this about that. What do you think? It, it, right, exactly. But the game is always about empowering the dreamer to become more connected to their own intuition. It's never, I always feel that it's never about taking the reins out of their hand. It's It's about showing them, look, you have the reins in your hand. And how do you want to use those? And how do you want to do something with them? So to be a space of reflection and support for their own process, even though sometimes it's really hard. I'll be listening to somebody, somebody's dream, and they'll and they'll really think it means one thing, and I'm my intuition is screaming, no, it means something else. But I'll still preface my response with, if it were my dream, I blah blah blah, or this is what I would think that it meant. I, I feel really strongly about keeping people feeling empowered and not taking their power from them when it comes to dream interpretation or even any guidance. You know, it's interesting. Um, When we can come back, I'd like you to talk about the time of night and also how to use your dreams to get your, your, um, you know, to to be proactive with them. But I want to comment on a couple of things, and that is, um, you know, as a mystic, um, even though I had, I'm sure I had uh, at least one or two psychology courses in college, I um, didn't know that, that it was Jung that had said the dreamer uh, and all the players are you. But mm-hmm. as a mystic, I can tell you that's what I've always known, yes, that the dreamer and all the players are you. And mm-hmm. I also know from my own experience is that when you journal your dreams and then you notice something from a year ago or two years ago, it's very compelling and you can actually get another layer of wisdom when you go back and review what you've written from a year or two ago. Absolutely. And that's very helpful too. So the journaling is very big. Absolutely. When we come back, more of Kelly Sullivan Walden. This is Maureen St. Germain and you are listening to The Practical Mystic. Stay with us. So, you want to change your life? Well, I have a great, easy, and stress-free way on how to do that. Get a guided meditation with Maureen St. Germain. Powerful guided meditations on CDs. Or you can download an MP3 to your computer or tablet. There's so many to choose from, and once you get one, they are so reasonably priced and work so well. You'll probably want them all, and why not? Visit MaureenStGermain.com and click on Books and Media. Do it now. MaureenStGermain.com books and media and help change your life now when you're looking for bedding department store prices can shock you we'll be shocked no more 
Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. The loving, healing energy of the Akashic Records is a profound tool for self-exploration and empowerment, and these records include every thought, word, and deed of your life throughout time. With so much information, you will probably need a guide to help you access and interpret it. That's where Marine St. Germain's trained and certified Akashic Record Guides can help. Discover what you really need to know with an Akashic Record Guide reading. For more information, visit AkashicRecordsGuides.org. Or visit MaureenStGermain.com and click Akashic Readings. Essential oils have been used since ancient times, but there has never been a formulation as amazing and original as Maureen St. Germain's Aro Mandalas, a line of essential oils that combine three spiritual and healing traditions. No matter what negative emotional issue you may be dealing with, there is an Aro Mandalas essential oil that can help you grow and reach a positive emotional response. So clear out those unwanted emotions and feel empowered with Aero Mandala's essential oils. Visit MaureenStGermain.com and click on Essential Oil Blends. That's MaureenStGermain.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net Hi, welcome back to The Practical Mystic with Maureen St. Germain. I'm Maureen, and you are listening to Talk Radio to help you make every day a day of heaven on earth. Today we are talking with Kelly Sullivan Walden, author of nine books. Her most current book is Love, Sex, and Relationship Dream Dictionary, and we are having a blast with all these different things that we can cover. But before we do, I want to remind uh, our listeners that the book that I have out that's available and for sale with wonderful information is called Realities of Creation, which I co-wrote with a number of authors. My chapter is the chapter on the higher self and the practical tools that will give you 100% accuracy. If you're interested in knowing that your higher self is giving you accurate information instead of trusting, this is the book for you because it will give you a step-by-step protocol that is fun and easy and playful, and at the end of six weeks, you will have a level of accuracy that is beyond your wildest, wildest expectations. So give that a shot. Um, We are talking with Kelly Sullivan Walden, and she is going to talk to us about a couple of things. Now, you were going to finish something uh, when I said when we come right back. You'll talk about this. Do you remember what it was? Oh, no. I don't. Okay, so let's... I don't I either, so I guess we weren't supposed to, but I am. Over interested. the break, I, we were talking about other things that took my mind on a whole other level. Oh, yes, I know. It was about using the dream time to help you to set intentions. I think that's yes, what you were... I want to make sure we cover that. But before we do, I want to get into... Um, is there any significance that you have found to the timing of a dream? You know, like I personally have found that my precog dreams are like the very last thing before I wake up. Mm. And I wonder if you have any um, information for our listeners in that regard. Yeah, I, I know. In, um, I, in some of the studying I've done, there's, there's maps of what happens during different dream cycles. And I've, across the board, in a simple form, I've found that it's usually easiest to remember the dreams that, that happen at the end of our sleep cycle, like right before we wake up. Those are usually the dreams easiest to catch unless we have a dream that's really disturbing or upsetting earlier in the night, then we'll catch it. But often we could think of um, the earlier part of the night being dreams that are more processing-oriented, helping us to put the pieces together of the day before so that we can come, you know, a lot of people will say before they make a decision about something, well, let me sleep on it, and, and then they get back to somebody. And that's because when you sleep on something and you dream on something, you might go to sleep feeling unclear and fuzzy, but you wake up and you have an aha that's because your dreams have helped you to sort through these things. So sometimes the, the earlier part of the dream is helping you to sort through all the data 
and get clear about some things. And then later, the, if you can get through all that stuff, then you can get on to some of the more, the higher levels of what our dreams are capable of. So I always suggest that people, that they do as much of that kind of work, the, I don't want to say higher or lower, but let's just say the less fun stuff, Get that out of your mind before you go to sleep. So if you have a to-do list, make your to-do list. If you can wrap up as many things as you can before going to sleep, great, so that you can use your dream time to travel, to explore other dimensions, to go to higher realms, to expand who you're capable of being and who you want to become. And if you can get that, like kind of the busy work out of the way, then you can have room for the stuff. And and those will happen throughout the night. I know some people will have precognitive dreams right smack in the middle of the night, but I do hear more often than not that the the significant dreams worth catching and easiest to catch do come at the end of the night, if that answers your question. So that leads us right into the whole idea. So how can I use my dreams proactively? How can I, you know, remember my dreams? How can I plan my dreams so that I get what I need? That kind of thing. The very first thing is, um, and I know when you introduced me, you you talked about my what's in my bio, which is I'm on a mission to awaken the world to the power of dreams. And one way, the thing that I feel like is the most important thing is for people to be excited about their dreams, inspired about them, and for them to at least recognize even if the dreams don't make sense to them, that there is something going on in our dreams, even if we wake up and the dream looks ridiculous, for us to have a respect for our dreams. So nothing's going to happen if we don't have that. If we have respect and we have interest and curiosity, then we're going to be more apt to remember our dreams. And we'll remember to set a dream declaration or an intention, but a dream declaration is an intention on steroids before going to bed. And And how do you do that? Where you think about your journal, journaling is one of the best ways to do it if you can quiet your mind and go there. And if you don't have time to journal... Stop, stop, stop. Yep. What do you mean? You go to your journal. Are you saying the dream journal would be um, ahead of the dream? I want to think about this. Yes, it's it's a dream sandwich. Journaling is like the bread and the dreams are the center, the meat of the sandwich. So journaling before you go to bed to connect with what is important for me to know. What is it that I would love for my dreams to help shed light on? What is it that I want to explore? What is it that I want to manifest in my life? And and how can my dreams support me in expediting the process of getting from here to there? So it's bookending your sleep correctly, going to sleep in a meditative way, having journaled, having connected with the with the essence of what you want your dreams to help you with. It could be about solving a problem. Sometimes that's easier to identify because pain helps us to focus and the game is to get spiritually advanced advanced enough where we can be really focused without the pain. Wouldn't that be nice? But whatever it is, get, set your focus before you go to bed and if you can, imagine as you go to sleep, almost like your own adult bedtime story, that you envision whatever it is you're wanting your dreams to help you with. Imagine that you're in the future with all the support that you want, all of that guidance. Imagine that it's already happened and how good you would feel in that realized dream. Like if you wanted to go to Paris, I'm, I'm leading a women's retreat in a few weeks in Paris. If you've always dreamed of going to Paris and you just want to go, then imagine that you're there by the Eiffel Tower with your croissant in hand and you know, flirting with a poodle that walks by or a handsome man, whatever. Imagine how good it would feel to be there. Put yourself in that scene and feel the joy and then let that take you into dreamland. And then as soon as you wake up in the morning, before you roll out of bed, you sit in bed and you don't move a muscle. The moment you know that you're waking up, hopefully it's before an alarm wakes you up because that can sometimes be so jarring that it can it can shift the state of mind that you're in while you're dreaming into a completely different place. And that's unfortunate. If you have to set an alarm, set a lovely, sweet alarm with some Enya music or some Tibetan bells <laughs> or something sweet so that it doesn't jar you awake but does wake right. you up. And then, so don't move a muscle. Stay in bed and review, rewind, replay the most recent dream you were having at least three times. Three is the magic number. And then the first thing you do is write the dream down or record it in your Dreams Cloud app because that, to me, I find to be the easiest thing to do. Okay, now stop a minute. Stop a minute. 
What do you mean, review your dream three times? What does that mean? So in your mind's eye, as you're laying in bed, often, like even people that say, I don't remember dreams, I will ask them if they if they do this simple formula, they always say, yes, I do remember dreams if I, if I remember to do this, which is don't move a muscle the moment. So imagine you're laying in bed. You're dreaming, you're in deep sleep, and you start to wake up. You feel the sun on your eyes, or you hear noises, or your dog barks, or something wakes you up, but you're still in that in-between state. So stay there. Don't be so quick to jump out of bed. Stay there and ask. have the first question that you ask yourself be, instead of, what do I have to do today? Before you ask yourself that question, the question should be, what was I just dreaming about? And then... Allow the memories of whatever images were in your mind as you were as you were dreaming to come back into your mind and review those those that vision several times. And if you can recall the feeling tone, because the feeling tone will be the anchor to help you extract more details from the dream. So do that three times. Does that make sense? So you're actually replaying the dream three separate times, or at least a significant piece of the dream. Like last night, there was a guy that I used to date in high school, and I and it was a short, it was like a two-week romance, and I haven't thought of him since, but he was in my dream. He had the most beautiful David Bowie eyes, one green eye, one blue eye, with the big, long eyelashes. And in my dream last night, he was like, I saw his eyes, and he was looking at me, and it was like, oh, oh my God, he was such a beautiful being. Why was I such a jerk to him? And that's what I was up with. So I just, there was all kinds of surrounding details with that dream. But the piece that anchored it for me was the feeling of, oh, my God, he was so precious and so beautiful. And that, so his eyes, actually, his, his eye, one eye, if I'm going to get really specific, was my anchor. So even though my dogs were running around and wanted me to feed them, I kept focusing on that dream so that when I could sit down to write it down, because sometimes you can't write it down immediately if you've got a barking dog, but at least keep the focus of your dream. Don't let your mind get distracted at all, otherwise it will be lost. And some of the greatest inventions known to humankind have come in through dreams. Some of the greatest healings have come in through dreams. Some of the greatest manifesting has come in through dreams, and you just don't want to lose it. I agree with you. I, I've written about that myself. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so then you you mentioned that you use an app. What, how do you use the app? So this is a free app. You can download it from your smartphone um, or even your computer. Dreams Cloud. So it's Dreams Plural Cloud, and it's a it's a recording app that's private or public based on how you want it to be. I choose mine to be private. Thank you very much because I'm public a lot. But I, hmm. I want my dreams. I had, I had one dream that I shared about Lady Gaga, and I forgot that it was on a public setting. And somebody said, oh, my God, your dream is in the number one spot if you Google Lady Gaga. I was like, what? Like number one on Google? I went, no! Oh, my God. So I was mortified, and I switched my settings quickly because I want to be able to share about my dreams when I want to, not by default. So make sure you put it on a private setting if you're – if you want to be private, at least initially. And, and then all you have to do is press a button and speak your dream, and it transcribes it for you, kind of in the same way that Siri does for you. Mm. And, and then, you, of course, you have to go back and sometimes edit it because she'll interpret it in not always the most correct way, but it's, it makes it fast and easy so that, to me, I found that it was a lot of my dream journals were wonderful, but I could only read about a quarter of what I had written because I'm still sleeping and still dreaming-ish while I'm writing. And a lot of people find that they write. If they think it's so brilliant, and they go back and they can't read it. So mm. this makes it easier to record and go back and find. So you could put in a keyword later, like a month later, and go, wow, I just had another Lady Gaga dream. Let me see, when did I have that last one? So I just put in a keyword, Lady Gaga, and then it pulls up all the Lady Gaga dreams I've ever had. And I can look at, wow, I've had them at the full moon every month. That's interesting. So you can start to you can, you can notice patterns and, and, and themes in your dreaming, like you were saying earlier. That takes it to another level when you've recorded dreams over time, and you can start to recognize patterns in your subconscious and in your soul. It's dreams speak the language of soul, so it's an opportunity to to develop a more intimate relationship with your own soul. Do you think there's a difference between the dreams that men dream and the dreams that women dream? 
Yeah, there there are, and ultimately, I think from the highest place, no, there's no difference. I think when it comes to the mystical dreams, when it comes to the dreams on a higher level, I don't think so. But when, but there is, I, I always say that there are three le- three different kinds of dreams. There's the angel, the ego, and the caveman. I would oh, say. Cool. The angel level dreams are the dreams that are more mystical. More of the people that are on, that are listening to your show, Maureen, I'm sure they're like, yes, when's she going to talk about the mystical stuff? (laughs) This is the stuff where, these are the dreams where you commune with a departed loved one or an angel or an energy or you have a 5D experience and you get to explore other realms that are just delicious or lucid dreaming I would put in, in that category. But we are also, we also have an ego, and, and it's an important part of being human to know how to present ourselves in our lives. So our dreams are helping us with that. So often our naked dreams or our um, giving a speech dream and we forget what we're about to say or we're getting an applause or we're wearing the wrong outfit to the wrong thing or we can't find our way to our school or our class and we're late to a test, a lot of those dreams would fall into the ego category because they're about looking good and fitting in and getting approved of or not. And then our, our, and so I would say that, um, and then there's the caveman dreams and those are the very primal dreams where we're, that are about fight and flight where we're fighting for our lives or we're running from our lives or we're, we're beating somebody up or we're screaming or something that's incredibly primal. So I would say that the angel dreams we all we have in common with men and women and then the ego dreams and the and the more caveman dreams can be a little bit different whereas there's scientific research that shows that men do have more often they have sexual dreams and they they are guilt free usually <laughs> and um and often male men's sexual dreams do have more penetration in them whereas females dreams can be sexual and sensual but not necessarily involve penetration it could be about hugging kissing holding touching just feeling an intense sexual or sensual connection and that would all fit into that dream and often and the dreams that men have are often about conquest going out and getting something um getting something that they want often women will have dreams where they are being pursued or it's more relational Men will have dreams that are more violent. Not This is not 100% true, but this is more often than not. Men do have more violent dreams where they're actually having to, they're protecting people that they love or they're protecting themselves. So, um, and women's dreams do, just like the way that we are in life, we tend to be more relational. So surprise, surprise, our dreams tend to be more relational. What, um, we only have a minute left. And I want to close with your um, information on your own radio show. But oh, can you give you. me a quick, quick update on what does it mean when you're flying? That's one area you didn't cover. Oh, flying would fit into the angel category because flying dreams represent being liberated, being connected to your spiritual essence, being recognizing that you're more than whatever your human circumstances are, and and usually they're an access to. And from a very practical perspective, it's a feeling tone of what success feels like in your body so it's it can span the gamut from a practical success tool that you can meditate on before you have a meeting and it also is a tool to access if you want to explore other realms it can sometimes be a gateway to other dimensions for you so So you are listening you are listening to the practical mystic we are almost out of time kelly how can they listen to your weekly radio show dreamsunzipped.com it's every every Friday from 10 to 11 a.m., and it's live. That's Pacific time. And if they want more information, they can go to dreamsunzip.com. They can send me dreams, or they can call in every Friday. It's live, so we have lots of callers. It's very lively. Some people would rather just send me their dreams anonymously via Facebook, and I can do dream interpretation on on, on the show. And we have, we have lots of mystics, and I'll have you on the show one of these days, Maureen, as well. It's It's mind body spirit dreams and magic and we unzip so we like to get deep and go beyond 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 what what people have typically know about or hear about so this is maureen saint germain 
with Kelly Sullivan Walden, bringing you the Practical Mystic with Maureen St. Germain. Until we meet in the heavens, I'm wishing you a million blessings for this day and claiming a day of heaven on earth for you and everyone you meet. Attention, Practical Mystic listeners. Here's a deal you won't want to refuse. If you've ever wanted a chance to get a free Akashic reading with Maureen St. Germain, then here's all you have to do to increase your chance for a totally free reading. Email Maureen. Tell her your problem, and if your story is used on the Practical Mystic Show, then you'll win a 30-minute Akashic reading with Maureen St. Germain. How easy is that? And the email address is easy to remember, too. Radio at MaureenStGermain.com. Email her now and get a chance at that free reading. Radio at MaureenStGermain.com. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now this same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live Earthcast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call earthchannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. So you want to change your life? Well, I have a great, easy, and stress-free way on how to do that. Get a guided meditation with Maureen St. Germain. Powerful guided meditations on CDs. Or you can download an MP3 to your computer or tablet. There's so many to choose from, and once you get one... They are so reasonably priced and work so well. You'll probably want them all, and why not? Visit MaureenStGermain.com and click on Books and Media. Do it now. MaureenStGermain.com, Books and Media. And help change your life now. Essential oils have been used since ancient times, but there has never been a formulation as amazing and original as Maureen St. Germain's Aro Mandalas, a line of essential oils that combine three spiritual and healing traditions. No matter what negative emotional issue you may be dealing with, there is an Aro Mandalas essential oil that can help you grow and reach a positive emotional response. So clear out those unwanted emotions and feel empowered with Aro Mandalas essential oils. Visit MaureenStGermain.com and click on Essential Oil Blends. That's MaureenStGermain.com. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative. Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR Healthy Life.